Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Legend of Dragoon. And we are basically where we uh, left off in the last video. This time, hopefully I won't have to do anything to do with the audio. That was not fun. Anyway, this is where we ended off the last episode, and this, if you head all the way over to the left there, into the middle, this is actually the main room where we come up, so uh, it's a quick uh, jaunt back, we just did a big circle. Anyway, if we go in here, head up to this one here, the one on the right side, we will go in and face the final Dragoon. This one's probably the most difficult, just because, like I was saying in the last one, he's a Hashel clone, and he's rather difficult because he's got no weaknesses to exploit and he's fast and he's powerful and anyway let's go over my setup for this fight uh, magical dart because it does slightly more than physical dart though if you want to you know go soul eater and therapy ring by all means do so um hashel uh still built for speed like he was before and um Meru as well is built for uh, magic and for HP. I find it odd though that at the same level, uh, Hashel has as much base HP as Meru does with a Dragon Helm. God, she needs more HP. Jeez, that's sad. Anyway, um, it would be more useful if I didn't have, um, you know, well, Hexhammer's in a good spot that does some good damage, but Cat's Cradle, yeah, that's not doing very good damage right now. It will just. Not yet. Anyway, um, don't use the pretty hammer when you're using Cat's Cradle. It really serves no purpose. It's only 20, uh, 20 SP, so go with the heavy mace and deal some more damage. That'll be more useful. Um, don't need to worry about the blue Dragoon armor in this fight because obviously that's not going to help us. And I don't have the uh, violet Dragoon armor yet, so I think I get that later sometime. Anyway, let's, uh, let's go in and see what else is going on in here well this is an interesting room yeah you've said that three or four times now rose kanzas now isn't that the same as the name for the castle the black castle or am i mistaken there hmm Why does she hate this place so much, anyway? Oh, maybe they're like, uh, dolls of worship, or... Maybe they're like those three cats in Chrono Cross. In a certain basement of a certain fish dude's, uh, house. Anyway. Why would you want to be reminded of that? That just seems bloodthirsty and stomach turning that's a strange line to uh, say to someone you haven't killed enough so let's kill you Anyway, we have one final Dragoon to deal with. This is Kanzas. And he, like I was saying, is quite powerful. So, best way to deal with him is start by doing power down. This is going to get pretty repetitive. It's just like every other boss fight I'm going to be in for the rest of the game. Power down and speed down and then start buffing up. And then uh, go all out on him, pretty much. Having buffs and debuffs, even though there's only a couple, it just it changes the game so much when you actually have the appropriate buffs and debuffs. I don't know why it's so often the case that uh, you know games will just forego having them at all. In this case, I'm going to try and use speed up on. Um, well, I can use it on. Dart. Yeah, sure, why not? I'll just use him to uh, use the Psych Bomb X because I do want to use that. Though he's going to go at me first. He's actually going to get a few attacks. In.
There you go. Use magic against the one with the highest magic defense. That'll do a lot. Anyway. Psych Bomb X. Eh, at least I got 200. Even if I'm just doing it so poorly recently. And 4,000 damage. Nice. It's more damage than I'm going to do with most of my other attacks, so... And this is Cat's Cradle. Cat's Cradle is kind of difficult to do because of where the counters seem to come. It's actually very similar to uh, Hashel and his uh, and his Hex Hammer. So now that I've got one round using that, I'm going to go Dragoon, and I'm going to use. Uh, final burst to take him down. It does slightly more than his normal attack. If you're not buffing up his stats, it does pretty much exactly the same. So that's why I've built him for magical instead of physical, because with the soul eater, it does about as much as, you know, this does without the soul eater. Or, yeah, with the soul eater. So taking the soul eater off means I can put other, uh, you know, and magic boosting uh, items on. and. Then we can do more damage. If I can speak, anyway. There you go. I didn't fast forward through this time. Are you happy now? Yeah, I think it does about 3,200 for me with his normal attack out of Dragoon form with the Soul Eater and without the uh, Magical Ring in Dragoon form using um, Final Burst. They do about the same, but since I have the Magical Ring, I'm just confusing you. I'm going to stop talking now. Um, Freezing Ring does not do particularly well in this uh, fight because of the red field, but let's use it anyway. I'm not sure if I've even shown it off. Yeah, unfortunately the red field really does kill its ability to do much of anything as far as damage goes. Anyway, let's hit him with another final burst. This time it gets fast forwarded. <laughs> and he should be pretty close, or he's gone. Well, not as hard as I was expecting it to be. I guess in my test run, I just wasn't very good at uh, button mashing, and that's uh, why I thought I was going to do worse. He seemed to attack me a lot more in that uh, in that test run. Anyway, how would Shirley be able to persuade him? He seems to be nothing but uh, bloodlust. That wasn't the only reason. Oh, so he sought redemption even though he tried to use the same evil to achieve it. I guess that's kind of interesting. Well, that's the reason why he couldn't pass on, and now that we've double killed him, he uh, finally found that place, I, I hope. Anyway, let's move on. So, now that we've uh, cleared out everything here, uh, there's nothing left to do here in Velweb, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some backtracking off-screen. As you can see, this is the area I said it was, so healing points down here. I'm going to do some backtracking off-screen and head back to... Um, where is it? The, uh, it's either the snowfield or the glacier. One of the ones. The, we're going back to the tower at Flanville, so... Where, whichever area that one's located in, I will uh, meet you back inside of there. Okay, and we're back. And if you're kind of wondering where I am, I came back to the Tower of Flanville and I made my way all the way to the top here so that we can finally take on Faust. Now, Faust is an interesting guy for a number of reasons. 
one of them being that in order to even access this place, you need to have all 50 Stardust and obtain the Vanishing Stone. Now, I'm not sure who says it, but somebody, I believe it's in the Wingly City, what is it, Ulera, uh, mentions that uh, in order to defeat Faust, uh, Melbuframa created a item that would allow him to control or do something that was going to help deal with um, Faust in case he got too powerful. That item was the Vanishing Stone that we got for completing the side quest. Land of Taboo. Well, last time I ran away. This time, this time I know what I'm doing. But this is an apparition. That stone is the Vanishing Stone. Yep. Yeah, someone mentioned that. I don't remember who. I'm pretty sure I showed it off, though. Oh, well, let's ruin his party, shall we? Let's go find out what's down there. Now, even if you're not planning on fighting the super boss, there is definitely reason to come down here. More teleporter pads. These ones are even more confusing, but only because this entire place is confusing. Now, this one, I don't even think I checked where this one leads. This probably takes me right back to the other side, doesn't it? Yeah, so this is the room I was just in with the same pad. These two lead to the same area, so yeah, there you go. And from here, we want to take the only other one available to us. And again, more of the same. And again. And again. Now, once we've taken this long path, we get a change in music. And the reason why you want to come here, even if you're not facing the super boss, a second Dragon Helm, so good. Yes, yes, yes. Definitely want to pick up this. Very important. Um, other than that, yeah, well, let's show off what happens here. Now, this path here, this left one, is going to intersect with the right one. There was three teleporter, well, technically four. I came from the one in the top left. And from there, um, you know, there was one on the right, one on the bottom, and the one I went into, the one on the left. Now, at this point, if you're confused about where to go, always try going east or going to the right of the screen. Um, in this case, once you get here, uh, this one will lead you back to the right-hand teleporter pad in the previous room. I'm just going to call them teleporter pads because whatever. This one actually moves us forward. And that's only half true, because it takes us to another one of these, for one. Let me take this warp. And it takes us to a new room. It's a circle. Probably boss time. Let's go. Faust is in one of them. Huh? Earthquake! No. So yeah, what's going to happen is we're actually going to approach from the other two doors as well to get into the center, who where, oddly enough, he's, uh, what's his num nuts, uh, isn't located in right now. But uh, in order to proceed, we have to drop two of these different uh, paths. It doesn't really matter which ones you drop, but the third one you'll be able to walk over. So in order to do this, we just need to knock them all down. Now, to give you a better idea of the layout of this area, I'm going to take the way that a back that I didn't come with. So I entered into this area with this pad. If you take this one down here and go over here, then we go to the right teleporter pad in the same room. So that's where I went in. That's where I came out. The other two entrances, uh, are accessible via this one. Now let's uh, let's go get one more of them, and then there are actually some new enemies in here that I'd like to show off if I have time. Uh, if not, then I don't know. We'll see. Now this one leads you back 
to... No. I want to take this one. I'm trying to remember my notes here. This one takes us to the other side here. Which, of course, is going to knock out some more of the uh, surface area there. So the other one is the one we're actually going to want to go on. However, that one uh, we don't want to go to yet. In order to get access to that one, we're going to want to take one of these paths, which both lead to the same area. But for now, I'm going to head backward so that we can show off at least one new enemy in this episode. Then I'll probably call it a day. So let's... This is, I think, the only room, and it's actually a good room to do some grinding in because it's got a save point. Now, let's see what we got here. These guys... What are you called, anyway? These are Dragon Soldiers. These guys can heal, they can erect physical barriers, and they have a chance at dropping a Night Shield, which is so garbage at this point, I don't even know why they do it. It's items we had at the beginning of the game. It gives you, like, ten defense. Pointless. Anyway, these guys fall down. Very similar to pretty much everything else. Use additions, fail at additions, still kill them because they're that weak. Yeah, they do quite a bit of damage though, so that is one thing you want to keep up for. Having high speed in this area is definitely a plus because it allows you to kill them before they get too many hits in on you, so you don't have to spend too much time healing. Now this isn't the party I'm going to use for the boss because that would be stupid. Um, but I do want to, I'm pretty close to getting Kongo's, uh, 5th level, or 5th Dragoon level, so. Ah, two more. Good, there's only one more left after that. Might even be able to fit it in this episode. Cool. And mud throwing. Just like enemies at the beginning of the game. This is a madman, or, well, probably more of a mudman. Anyway, he can use Disable, he can also drop a Beast Fang, which is a weapon that I already have for Hashel. Again, why at this point are we getting this? You can use a Psychedelic Bomb in here to take out enemies quickly, um, but I'm still working on additions. Now, this guy is a Basilisk, which, if you're familiar with any Final Fantasy game, they can uh, petrify you, which, of course, we don't want. That guy fell down. Now, I'm just going to guard some HP back here, and guard again, and have Kongo finish this guy off. There we go. Yeah, at this point in the game, if you have an addition, especially a final level addition, it's probably going to one-shot pretty much everything. So one more enemy left, and hopefully I find it on this turn. If not, I'll get it on my screen. And... There we go, finally. I don't know why it took so long to find this guy, but we finally found the final new enemy in this area. There's only four. This is Metal Fang. He can use some magical attacks, and he's otherwise pretty unimportant and unthreatening. So yeah, Kongo's been dealing most of the blows. I'm still trying to get his 5th uh, level or his 5th Dragoon level, so any SP he can gain from being attacked is kind of welcome at this point. Normally I get it uh, within, you know, 20 or so uses of Bone Crush past get him hitting uh, 80 uses, so him getting to level 5 on it, but this time I've probably used it 30, 35 times since then, and still haven't got it. I guess that means last time I did it, when I found out, uh, you know, how long it was about going to take, I guess I must have screwed up on his additions a lot more than I did this time. And I didn't learn it. Oh well. Anyway, uh, that's all for this episode of Let's Play Legend of Dragoon. Next time, I will be, uh, well, I'm going to do some little bit of level grind. Well, not really level grinding. More than anything, I want to get uh, Flower Storm up to level 5. So, 12 uses of that, and I'll probably work on Kongo a little more, maybe, if I feel like it. Um, yeah, and that's, other than that, I will set up and prepare for Faust, and then uh, we'll see what we can do against him. Anyway, that's all for this episode, and I'll see you guys next time.